A few days later. Good morning, I go into work and I'm surprised to see that Ethan hasn't showed up yet. I can't remember time when I've shown up before him. Come to think of it, I have no idea where Ethan lives. He told me that he lives alone, but how far away is his apartment? I wonder how far he has to commute to get here every day. Ethan really takes off a day off too. Before I have time to worry for Ethan comes strolling through the front door. Sorry I'm late. I overslept a little this morning. That's pretty rare. Is everything quick alright? Yeah, I'm fine. Still, I can't help but notice him swaying until as he walks. Is he really okay? Luckily today the lunch party at the restaurant isn't busy. I continue to keep an eye on Ethan and he seems mostly normal, but there's something weird about the way he's moving and speaking. I can't put my finger in it. I wonder what's wrong. Fortunately, there aren't too many customers, so it can kinda relax a little bit, but I'm still worried about him. He's not the type to admit to having problems in the room. Huh? Ethan! Huh? I love to see Ethan slump on the ground and Laura standing over him nervously. I run over as quick as I can, dropping everything I'm doing. What happened? I, I don't know, he just, he just collapsed all of a sudden. Tentatively, I touch Ethan's forehead, it's burning hot. As I expected, it seems he has a fever. He's running a fever. Laura, can you get Liam to come and help lift him? Okay. <clears throat> Liam and I, well, mostly Liam, help eat him up and prop him up in one of the booths towards the back of the restaurant. What should you do, Liam? Well, I'd offer to take him home, but I don't know where he lives. We have to take care of him here until he comes around. Is he going to be okay? Don't worry so much, Lee. It's just a little fever. I'm sure he was just overworking himself too much, as usual. But it will pass. I know that what Liam is saying is true, but I still can't help but worry. Maybe it's because Ethan always tries so hard to be strong. Seeing him like this really hurts. Look, Lily, why don't you stay here? I'll run out and get some medicine from the local pharmacy. We should at least try to bring down his fever. Right, but what about the restaurant? Well, we're not that busy right now anyway. I think Laura can handle herself for now, and I'll help her when I get back. Just take care of Ethan, okay? Alright. Cheer up, Lily. Ethan will be fine. Thank you, Liam. You're right. Liam leaves to get the medicine. I feel you sitting around won't do anything, so I wet a cloth. A cloth? or whatever, with cold water and try placing that on Ethan's forehead. He shivers a lot at first, but then it seems he feels a bit better. Liam returns and we rose Ethan enough to take the medicine. Fuck, he feel, falls asleep again right after. Why does he have to work his house so hard? Is worth it when he has to get sick and worry everyone? Ethan, can't you rely on me more? A few hours passes by and before we know it, it's already lunch break. We close down the restaurant for a few hours, and everyone's worried about it. We leave him in your couple hands, Lily. They all say. Everyone thinks Ethan will be too embarrassed if there's a crowd taking care of him. I suppose they're right about it. He'll probably tell us all for being such mantlers as soon as he's awake. Towards the end of the break, with just Ethan and me in the back of the restaurant, and his eyes flutter open. Hey. Are you fully awake now? Ethan slowly sits up and drops his eyes for a bit before putting his glasses back on. How long was I out? A few hours, not long. <laughs> oh, how embarrassing. Don't move around so much, you still have a fever. It's probably best for you to go home for today, otherwise it might get worse. Ethan sighs, I'm sure he's thinking about the cut to his paycheck that will result from him taking a day off. Lily. Yeah? Have you have you been taking care of me this whole time? Uh yeah. But but don't worry. The restaurant was pretty empty today, so Laura and Liam covered for me. Oh, uh, Liam's the one who bought the medicine for you, and he lived at you over here. I wasn't asking about Liam. Right. Why are you always so nice to me? Huh? 
What do you mean? I'm nice to everybody. Oh, I mean, you're always talking to me and help me out even though I say nothing but mean things to you. There's no use in being nice to me, and yet you... How can you say there's no use? I, I spend time with you because I want to. But why do you want to? Why do you bother with me? Surely you'd have a better time with Liam or Pierre. Well, you're always working so hard. What does that have to do with anything? His words sound so bitter and annoyed and... I get emotional. I can't stop the words from tumbling out of my mouth. It's it's because I love you, Ethan? Oh, crap. <laughs> they didn't see that coming. I gasp and clap my hands over. <laughs> over my mouth, but it's too late. I said it. I don't think I even really understood my own feelings and it just now. But he doesn't say nothing. The silence is chilling, feeling unsure. I decide to press on. You are always working so hard. I, I, I admire you a lot, Ethan. I just, I want to support you so you don't have to strain yourself anymore. More silence. I'm about to try and break it when Ethan finally speaks up. But his reply isn't at all what I expected. Those sure are pretty words, aren't they? There's tension there. I never heard such hardness to his tone even when he was insulting me. I feel a chill down to my core. Ethan? You and sure are good at saying things that you don't mean. How, how can you say that? I mean everything I said. I don't... Enough! His voice is so rough and broken that I'm ashamed into silence. Hey, do you know I lo have to work so hard this job? I shake my head. It's true that I have to buy my school and living expenses, but there's more to it than that. No way school will cost this much on its own. I swallow. Somehow I already know that whatever he's about to say is not going to be pleasant, but I need to hear this. I need to know. Two years ago I had a girlfriend. She was just like you. Bright, hardworking, kind. Her dream was to be a doctor, but she came from a poor family and didn't have enough money to pay for all the medical school fees. I had better credit than she did, so I decided to help her out. I incurred a lot of debt on her behalf so that she could graduate early and go to a medical school. I worked hard to support her in her dream, even though it put me behind in my own classes, but I thought it was worth it. I didn't mind, she said that she appreciated me, that she loved me. She promised that once she was in medical school, it'd be her turn to support me. I didn't care so much about that, I just wanted her to be happy. It hurts to hear that Ethan talk about this woman he once loved, but I have to keep listening. This is the key to finally learning about who Ethan is. Well, she got her dream. She graduated from university and went on to a prestigious medical school in a different state. And then, suddenly, she cut off contact with me. Dead bitch! I thought something had happened to her. I was so worried that I traveled all the way to my medical school. And what did I find? She found a fellow student there who had a bright future and decided that being with me would only drag her down. She cut off contact because she felt she couldn't look me in the eye after all the work I did for her. She felt bad after about dumping me, but wasn't guilty at all over just abandoning me without a word. Ethan, he cuts off me off before I can say anything because that's what all people are like. They talk about supporting, supporting you and being there for you, but in the in the end, all they want is their own happiness. Ethan finishes, brings his eyes to, up to me, my own, and he looks so angry that I flinch. I will never trust someone who so easily spouts the crap you just did. Everyone has their price. The minute you find someone better, I'll be kicked to the curb. And I've had enough of that. Defend myself, defend myself, stay quiet. Hmm. Where should I go with that? If that for me, I probably would say quiet. Come on, after such a thing. Let's see 
he told us. God damn it. <laughs> defense, defense, whatever. I can't let him think this. My feelings are genuine. I love him and truly really want to support him. Hey, Dan, that's not how I am. I truly. <laughs> that's what they all say. Sorry. Thanks for helping me. I think you're right. The fever is getting to me. I should go home now. It. Goodbye, Lily. God fucking damn it! God damn it! I got a bad ending, probably. I'm so fucking annoyed. Oh, I know he will be at work tomorrow. Something about his turn sounds so fine. Final, I'm afraid. How will the two of us get along from now on? Do 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 do. Oh, not so happy. Well, tune. A few days later. The next few days at work almost unbearable. I used to be bothered by it and being rude to me, but now he looks at me as if I'm worth no more than the dirt on his shoes. It really hurts. I feel even worse than if he just rejected me. The worst part is that I think it and is even worse off than I am. Even though he's still feverish, he shows up to work anyway and starts throwing himself into his work even more than before. I keep fearing that he will collapse again, but I don't know what I can say to him. Ethan has already made it clear that he doesn't want to listen to what I have to say. Uh, Lily, you don't look so good. Are you sure you don't want to take day off? Uh, I'm fine, just as you worried. About Ethan? Yeah, I think he's working himself much too hard. What is it? I, I didn't want to tell you about this. Ethan made me promise not to. Huh? I wonder what is it about. What could it possibly be that Ethan wouldn't want me to know? <laughs> I guess there's lots of things it could be. I overheard him on the phone the other day. It seems he's deeply in debt, but I guess you knew that already. Yeah. Well, the creditors are dogging him at his partner now. I think he's behind on the payment because of that sick day he took. Oh no, that's, that's not fair. He was sick. I don't think loan sharks are usually fair. I wanted to help him out, but he wouldn't hear of it. That sounds like Ethan, alright. Why won't we upset him? I think it's the time that can admit that he needs help. He wants to shoulder all of his burdens on his own. So if he says something mean to you, remember that it probably hurt him to say it too. I didn't say that Ethan said something to me. No, oh, but it's pretty obvious. We've all been really worried about you too. Thanks, Tia. I'm so glad to have your support. No problem, Lee. Just remember, you'll get through this. Life's too short to be down yourself all the time. You're right. I just wish Ethan would see that too. Ethan, what's going to happen to us? Is even our friendship going to be over? God damn it, I don't like that tune. I'm afraid it, this is going to be a bad end. A few days later, things between Ethan and Ethan and me still haven't improved. He yells at me over the slightest mistakes and ignores me the rest of the time. It's an emotional roller coaster. I have no idea what to expect anymore. Those warm times we shared seem like distant memories. I hear that the creditors are still coming after him too. I don't know what I can do for Ethan anymore. He won't even let me near him. Out of desperation, I call my uncle. I know that Ethan won't like this, but I don't think he can hate me anymore than he already does. I might also try to help. Oh Lily, how rare of you to call me. Uncle, I have a big favor to ask you. What is it? Well, Ethan is suffering a lot because of a big debt. I explained the entire thing to my uncle, who patiently listens to everything I have to say. I see, that sounds like real trouble, huh? You must really care about Ethan. Hey. I don't see much point to lying about it. I really do. I know that he doesn't trust me and will probably be angry that I help him out like this, but I want him to be able to live freely. You pay off his debts for now, you can do so. You can take it out of my paycheck. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Ethan's been a valid member of the staff for years now. Of course, I want to help him. Consider it taken care of. <laughs> Thank you, Uncle. But you know. Huh? 
Since you've come here, this is the first time you've asked for me for my help with anything. Fetch. I'm glad to see you working so hard, but we're family, you know. You don't have to hold back. I, I just didn't want to burden you. If I can't be there for my niece, who else could? Next time you have trouble, please don't hesitate to ask me for help. Thanks, uncle. At the end of the day, I'm about to leave for home when I'm stopped by Ethan. He looks so angry. 